Our oceans are complex and challenging environments that are under a lot of pressure. It's obviously really important that we protect them. But how do we do that? I'm Connell Bradwell, a wildlife conservationist here in British Columbia. I'm Erica Porter, a fisher here in Nova Scotia. We are the hosts for Coastlines, a CBC series that brings together young Canadians who are working to save our animals, plants and habitats on all three of Canada's coasts. And today we're talking about marine conservation. Some of my best marine wildlife encounters have happened in the area behind me, and part of it is an ecological reserve. I've seen things like orcas, humpbacks, sea lions, thousands of seabirds, and it's a great example of how life can thrive if we create marine protected areas, which can be found throughout Canada's coastlines. So marine protected areas are clearly defined spaces in the ocean that are managed for the long-term conservation of nature, and they can do this through legal or other effective means. This is Rianne, a conservation campaigner here in Nova Scotia who advocates for the protection of nature through MPAs. These MPAs can take on lots of different shapes and legal designations, but ultimately they're areas that limit certain industrial and commercial activity to protect the overall health of the ocean. Specifically, Rianne helps to show governments and local communities the benefits of marine protected areas, which apparently there are a lot of. They can provide economic benefits, protect entire ecosystems, protecting biodiversity, help to mitigate the impacts of climate change. So it seems that by limiting certain unsustainable activities, MPAs support the overall health of the ocean, which can be good for communities. Erica, you're a fisher, what's your take? Yeah, so I think marine protected areas are such an important tool for conservation. I mean, especially for future generations. And from my personal experience, involving the local communities in the process of designating MPAs is so critical. Rianne also mentioned that MPAs can help mitigate the impacts of climate change. So they can do this by protecting ecosystems that store a lot of carbon, such as salt marshes and eelgrass beds. And these ecosystems as well can provide coastal protection so they can reduce the impacts of storm surges and sea level rise. MPAs are really a win-win situation for climate change then. Helping to prevent more global warming by storing carbon and reducing the impacts of climate change on coastal communities. Right, and this is why Rianne says that we need more marine protected areas across Canada. Canada's actually committed to protecting 30% of our ocean by 2030. So it's really important that we hold the government accountable um, to this commitment um, and establish a, a network of well-managed marine protected areas. Like Rianne mentioned though, MPAs can take on many different forms. They can be legally protected or they could be stewarded in other effective ways. Exactly. Here on the West Coast, Jordan Wilson from the Health Set Nation sees conservation in a totally different light. To me, conservation is just a way of life. The Heltzik people's beliefs of what conservation is, is not that we manage the land or the ocean. We actually don't even have a word for management in our language. We don't believe in managing the environment. We believe in coexisting and taking stewardship of it. In this reciprocal, symbiotic relationship, we take care of the environment and it, in turn, takes care of us. That is pretty different from a legally designated MPA though, isn't it? But Indigenous people's traditional knowledge has always been its own protection plan, which is extremely important if we're going to effectively help the ecosystem to its full potential. The Heltzik practice is taking only what we need, leaving behind enough to ensure the preservation of what we are harvesting, making sure it will always come back to flourish. Indigenous knowledge and stewardship practices have been proven to be some of the most effective ways of protecting biodiversity with some of the healthiest ocean ecosystems being actively used and stewarded by coastal communities. And that's why Jordan insists on being a good steward like generations before him. I want to make sure that another 700 generations can continue to enjoy the beauty, the nature in our territory, the way I am able to. Now, in the Arctic, Inuit communities hold similar views of symbiotic relationships and stewardships of the ocean. Justin is from Pond Inlet, Nunavut, and has similar sentiments to how conservation is approached. Inuit and the Arctic Ocean are deeply intertwined. And that, to me, is much more than just, you know, the traditional sense of having marine conservation in the ocean. Justin is currently living in Ottawa, helping to manage an amazing youth-led project called Ikarvik. So Ikarvik is a group of young Inuit, we try and connect 
uh, researchers and scientists into the world of traditional indigenous knowledge. A lot of the research that Justin and the team at Carvic work on is better communicating the indigenous knowledge about the ocean. Because, like Justin says, the Arctic Ocean is such an important part of Inuit culture. As an Inuk myself, I find it really, really empowering to see Inuit youth talk about these things when it comes to the ocean and preservation of Inuit culture and embracing that Inuit culture. In so many ways, the Inuit have been incredible leaders in combining indigenous stewardship of the oceans with legal protection measures. And this is something that Justin's seen in his home community. A few years ago, Canada announced a new national marine conservation area called the Logotiup Imangat over in Lancaster Sound. In 2017, Canada, Nunavut and the Kikitani Inuit Association agreed on the final boundaries for the marine protected area, which is more than twice the size of Nova Scotia. And I think this is a step in the right direction because not only will it protect the marine wildlife and ecosystem in the Arctic, but it also gives Inuit more self-determination. And we, we can have a safe place and say, yes, the waters that are traditionally used since time immemorial will be protected. And I think that's amazing. Making this MPA together was a major milestone for strong partnerships between Canadian and Indigenous governments for protecting nature. This is a huge step forward for marine conservation. Whatever way we go about protecting the ocean, it's clear that it's important to incorporate science, local communities and Indigenous knowledge in ocean conservation and stewardship. The ocean is essential to our current and future ways of life, and we all have a part to play in making sure that it's healthy for future generations. Thanks so much for watching, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe.